Hello everyone, welcome to Carnivorous Plants Hub. Today I'm going to be planting and attempting to germinate around 200 Venus flytrap seeds along with countless Cape Sundew seeds. I'm going to attempt to do this in my click and grow unit along with water germination. Make sure to stick around to the end of the video. I'll be showing you updates on the seeds all the way up to the 55 day mark. You really don't want to miss it. As you can see, I have my hand mixed and rinsed substrate here. It's available in my store now. If you need some good Venus flytrap substrate for repotting, it's about as good as it gets. Head on over to my store and check it out. Here you can see I have some test tubes. This is for the water germination. I learned this process from the Evan M Carnivorium YouTube channel. I'm not going to get into the details of how water germination works, but I strongly suggest that if you're interested, to head over to their channel and watch their water germination videos when you're done here. Steven works with his kids, Evan M, to make some great carnivorous plant content. He also sells seeds, which are most of the seeds you'll be seeing in my video today. If you need seeds, I strongly recommend reaching out to Steven on their Instagram. Not only do they make great content and sell seeds, but much of the money that they make goes to really good causes. They're great people, they make great content, and they have a great product. I strongly recommend them. I got a link both in the pinned comment and the description to check out their Instagram and YouTube channel. As you can see here, I've already put the seeds in these test tubes. It's really just a waiting game now. I'm also bringing you a huge update on my water germinated seeds, so make sure to stick around to the end of the video so you don't miss that. Let's start off by showing you the click and grow unit. If you're interested, I have a link available with a discount code for these. They're amazing. My wife and I have been growing lettuce in them, and it really does an amazing job. But if you know me and you know my channel, you knew that at some point I was going to have to try growing some carnivorous plants in it. It's actually a pretty simple setup. These cups will house my substrate and will plant the seeds inside the cups. The cups use a wicking system to keep the substrate and the seeds well watered. These little wicks go down into the tank where the water is kept. It keeps the substrate really wet, which is really good for seedlings. It also comes with these humidity domes. Extra humidity is another thing that Venus flytrap and sundew seedlings really like. I'm excited to get this all set up and to see how the seeds do in the click and grow unit. And real quick, I just wanted to take a look at some Venus flytrap seeds. It's really common for people to get scammed when buying Venus flytrap seeds. If they don't look like this, then you don't have Venus flytrap seeds. This is why I strongly recommend that you reach out to someone like Steven with Evan M Carnivorium to get good seeds. Otherwise, you may end up growing an herb or something. They're really dark black and they're teardrop shaped. Anything other than this is just not a Venus flytrap seed. Only buy seeds from reputable sellers. I would try to avoid anything from eBay or Amazon unless the seller that you're buying from is reputable. Okay, let's go ahead and put the substrate into the click and grow cups to prepare them for the Venus flytrap and sundew seedlings. I use the same method to do this that I do for repotting any normal Venus flytraps. The only thing that I don't do is I don't put the paper towel in the bottom. With this wicking system, you don't really need to do that because you're not relying on drainage holes. If you want to learn more about repotting Venus flytraps, I'll have a video popping up at the end here so you can learn some more. I filled a few of these cups up to the top when I realized that the humidity domes would need a little bit of space to allow the flytraps and sundews to grow. I actually had to go back and remove some of the substrate. This will allow me to keep the humidity domes on a little bit longer while the seedlings grow a bit. For the rest of these, I just left a little bit of room from the top of the soil to the top of the cup. And while I'm filling these, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to pour some water on the like button and subscribe to help my channel grow. My dream's always been to start my own carnivorous plant nursery, and I finally made some progress on this by opening up my own store. I'm now selling premium, pre-rinsed carnivorous plant substrate. This would be great for Venus flytraps, sundews, sarracenia, and other types of carnivorous plants. I'm also selling a special soil mix for pings. I've also started selling pings, and I'm adding more live plants soon. I also have premium planters and other carnivorous plant accessories. Head on over to my website to help support the channel and my dream. Also, really quickly, I wanted to mention that today is the last day of California Carnivore's big sale they have going on. Everything is 20% off. If you're in the market for some Venus flytraps or any other carnivorous plants, they have a huge selection right now. Last time I checked, their Ping Rock was even in stock, which is awesome because it's not in stock very often. If you missed the sale, no worries, you can use my code BUGEATER to get 10% off your order anytime. I have the links in the description and the pinned comment so you can head on over there and pick out a new carnivorous plant. Come on, you know you deserve it. Perfect, thank you so much for listening to that. Let's go ahead and get back to the seedlings. Now that we have all the cups filled, it's time to plant the seeds. Venus flytrap seeds are pretty simple. I mostly just sprinkle them on the top. No need to bury them. 
I just like to make sure that they're touching the substrate. You can see here I'm just pressing them down and getting them stuck to my finger. You can do this however you like, just make sure to sprinkle them across the top of the substrate. The big challenge here is making sure that they get spread out a bit. One of the benefits of water germination is that you're actually planting the little fly trap starts, so it's easier to put them where you want them. I'll be showing you that process here in just a little bit, so stick around. I like to try to plant about 8 to 12 seeds per each cup. And let's not forget about the sundew seeds. I may have sprinkled just a few too many. Oh well, the more the merrier, right? I did have some extra plant pieces in with the seeds that shouldn't hurt anything. I just want to make sure that the seeds are spread out a bit. I'm going to add a few more here just to make sure. I harvested these seeds over a year ago, so I'm hoping that they're still good. Stick around to find out if they took off. If you look closely, you can see that the little black shiny seeds are in the substrate. You can also see the crushed glass, which is one of the things that makes my substrate so unique. Make sure you label your seedlings so you know which one is which. I'll get better labels to put on the tags later with my wife's label maker. I wanted my sundew seeds to be on each end, so I switched the cups around a bit to accommodate that. To end this process, I use my Core Gear Mister, there's a link in the description, to add some water to the top of these seedlings. I probably sprayed the first couple a bit too hard, but that's okay. Even if they're covered just a little bit, they'll still germinate. I like to do this to make sure that the seedlings are making good contact with the substrate. If the seedlings stuck to a piece of perlite or something, it might not germinate very well. They seem to do better when they're in good contact with the peat moss. Remember, only distilled, pure, RO, or rainwater. No tap water with your seedlings. Carnivorous plants are not big fans of the stuff that comes in your tap water, including chlorine and dissolved solids. Now let's go ahead and grab the humidity domes and get the click and grow unit put in its home and let these seeds do their thing. Okay, here we go. The light is on and the seeds are beginning their growing journey. The click and grow has a 12 on and 12 off lighting cycle. I like the side of it here as it has a little slot for the cord. It helps keep the cord tucked away so you don't have to see it. All we really need to do now is add water. The water sits in the basin and the wicks will pull the water up into the cup. When watering, you have this little bobber. It lets you know when the basin is full and when you need to add more water. It makes watering super easy. It takes a while for the basin to empty enough for you to need to add more water. If the bobber is up, you're good. If you see the bobber go down, it needs more water. Remember, seedlings do not like drying out. Never let these little cups get dry. You wanna stay on top of the water. Now, I had to wait and wait, and wait. But you don't have to. I'm gonna share with you the different stages of my results. Let's see how these seedlings have done over their first 55 days. And real quick before I show you the seedlings, I just wanted to add that all my update video is being shot with my smartphone and the Apexel macro lens. The macro lens just straps right to your cell phone. I just did a video reviewing this little lens. It's so easy to use and gives some pretty amazing results. If you want to use your phone to see up close, I strongly recommend checking it out. There's a link in the description and pinned comment for not just the video, but also how you can get the lens yourself. Okay, our first update is coming at 21 days since we've planted the seeds. Let's start with the fly traps. Here we have our first peek at green. This is what they look like with the naked eye right now. Let's zoom in with the Apexel smartphone lens and see how they really look. I took this video because it was the first green that I saw coming out of any of the seeds. You can see here there have been a few different seeds that are starting to sprout. The super close-up is really cool, but you can also see some of the moss starting to pop up and some of the algae. Don't worry too much about the algae. This is normal due to the humidity dome and lack of airflow. Once they start to take off a bit, I'll remove the domes and get some airflow going so we can get some of this algae off of here. Here's also a cool look at the sundews. They aren't much to look at with the naked eye, but once you get close, you can really see them starting to come alive. Most of them are just starting to bloom, but you can see the dew starting at even their tiniest form. It's so fun being able to see these up close like this. I also wanted to show you the water germinated seeds. You can see they're really starting to shoot out. Some of them are even ahead of the soil germinated seeds. It'll be fun to see how the water germination compares to the seed germination. Okay, let's jump five days later or 26 days after planting the seeds. Here are the Venus fly traps. I have a few more starting to pop out of the seed. You can see a couple of them are putting out their signature double leaves. You often see them do this double leaf loop before you see any real Venus flytrap characteristics. They'll put out two leaves, then the third leaf is usually an actual trap. Stay tuned to see the next update. 
Here are the sundews, a quick look at how they appear with the naked eye. Let's zoom in and take a look. You can see just five days later, we have much more dew and they're really looking like tiny sundews now. I'm now starting to regret just a little bit the amount of seeds that I put into these little cups. I didn't think they would all germinate. It's looking like the two sundew cups are going to be a bit crowded. All right, here's update number three. Let's start with the fly traps. We're now four days later and a total of 30 days since planting. We have a couple of actual fly trap leaves, which is exciting. You can see they're all in kind of a scattered state of germination. Some of the seedlings are just starting while others are putting out their first actual fly trap. It's a good reminder to be patient. Every seed is different. They do not all germinate at the exact same time. As I'm editing this video, about 60 days later, I just noticed another seedling that just started germinating. For some of the seeds, it really takes some time. Let's take a look at the sundews at 30 days. They tend to grow quite a bit faster than Venus flytraps. You can now see the chaos with the sundews. There are far too many clustered together. This cup is going to be a lot of fun. They are really starting to take shape and producing a lot of dew. I even saw a gnat stuck to one when I opened the humidity dome. They'll likely be big and strong enough to catch and keep bugs soon. Okay, we're gonna jump a little bit further ahead now. We're gonna go to the 55 day mark from the time that we planted the seeds. Here's a quick look at some of the Venus flytraps without zooming in. You can see they're really starting to look like baby flytraps now. They're so cute. Let's zoom in and see how they're doing. You can see that most of these are really starting to take shape. We have various colors and sizes. This is why it's really fun to get a selection of different Venus flytrap seed crosses. You just never know what you're gonna get. You can also see that the moss is really starting to take off. An interesting observation is that even though we're at 55 days, a couple of these seeds are just starting to germinate. So be patient. Don't get too scared if yours don't take off right away. Be consistent with the light and the water and hopefully they'll start to sprout. I even found a little sundew that made its way over to the fly traps. No idea where it came from or even what kind it is yet. It does seem to be more red than any of my capes, so it'll be fun to keep an eye on it. I have to ask really quick because I'm really not sure. Does anyone know what the spider web looking lines are across the bottom of some of the substrate? You can't really see it with the naked eye. You do have to zoom in super close, but I'm hoping somebody can tell me what that stuff is. There's an example of it on the screen right now. Okay, let's go ahead and jump over to the sundews. Here are the capes 55 days later. Let's first take a look at the naked eye view. You can see with the naked eye now, the little cups are just chocked full of these little sundews. One of the cups has a ton of moss coming up as well, which is interesting. I'm not really sure why the moss is growing so well in one of the cups, and there's almost no moss growing in the other. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. This is fun because we have this is actually really fun because they've been catching some gnats and this apexal lens, you can really zoom in and capture them. Even at a super young age, the sundews are skilled hunters. The little mold spots are where they caught a bug and it's molded over now. It's really interesting. You can see that there are just so many sundews in these little cups. The thought of them growing big and separating just seems daunting already. I also still need to show you the water germinated seedlings. I'm gonna get them out of these test tubes and into the fresh batch of substrate here. I kind of messed this up a little bit. I probably should have already pulled these out of the water. It's been 55 days and I probably should have pulled them out around the 25 to 30 day mark. They look a bit light starved and are well overdue to get out of the water and into the substrate. I'll show you what they look like outside of the test tube. They magnify a bit inside of the test tube so they're a little bit smaller than they look behind the glass. They get a little bit bunched up so you have to take some time and pull them apart. Once they're pulled apart, we'll go ahead and put them into the substrate. Again, if you want really good information and a tutorial for water germination, head on over to Evan M's Carnivorium for a great tutorial. Once you have the ball pulled apart, just grab it by its root and bury it in the substrate with some tweezers. I'm gonna finish putting these into the substrate here and then I'll show you what they look like at the end. These here are germinated from the seeds that I got from Trap Daddy, and you can see by their color that they really need some light. I'm actually a little bit worried about them. I'm hoping that getting them under the light will help them start moving in the right direction. I'm going to acclimate them to the light a little bit before going full typical Venus flytrap lighting. I'm getting close to being done here, but I did have some extra seeds that I wanted to throw in with the water germinated starts. I had some extra trap daddy seeds, so we'll put them over here with the trap daddy starts. This way we don't get the seedlings mixed up. You can see all the seeds mixed in now with the water germinated starts. It'll be fun to see how they do. Here's a good look at all the new starts. If these all do well, this is going to be a very full tray of Venus flytraps. 
I also had some extra Darwin seeds that I got from Steven that I sprinkled in with the Darwin starts. I'm also going to throw in some sundew seeds here on the end, mostly because why not? Here you can see some of the sundew seeds on my hand. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle them in. I had to put the camera down for just a moment, but trust me, lots of sundew seeds were thrown in there. Make sure to like and subscribe so you can see my next update. I would imagine I'll probably do another update here in a month or so, so you can see how much they've grown. The Click and Grow has done an amazing job so far, and I'm really excited. I'll obviously have to move these fly traps at some point due to them needing to be in dormancy, but not for a while. Remember, links to anything you saw in this video are in the description and the pinned comment. Make sure to head over to my store if you're looking for substrate, live plants, and carnivorous plant accessories. Make sure to check out the video popping up on the screen right now to learn more about repotting Venus flytraps. Thank you so much for stopping by today, and I really hope to catch you in my next video. Bye!